Hi, my name is Sean Taylor. That's my friend Chris Ford. I almost said that's my Chris friend Ford, a.k.a. the Objective Geek. Whatever, it works both ways. And this is Avatar The Last Podcasters coming to you with a special episode. A little bit different this week because we actually had some pretty exciting news popped up. And we tried to record an episode last night. And so if it sounds like I'm getting a little bit of deja vu and I can't remember what I said and what I didn't. Because we were like 10 minutes in last night. And then my power. During that part, it, uh, we're like literally like three minutes in it, which was don't, the best time. Don't, don't pull back the curtain, Chris. They don't need to know those details when when the details are true. They don't need to know that. Anyway, <laughs> we started recording this last night to try to get it out really fast, and then Storm knocked out my power, and we're grown ups, and we had to go to work. Long story short, we're very <laughs> sorry. So we're going to record it tonight and put it up as soon as possible because it's very exciting news. Chris, would you? You know what? Still, Chris, I gotta know how you doing. I am doing. Good. Doing great. Doing great. Don't need to elaborate anymore on that. Just doing great. That's perfect. In that case, <laughs> walk us through what walk us through what we're gonna do today. All what, right. what the news is, what we're talking about. I'm gonna pull up an article. Uh, just as I am getting deja, I am getting deja vu because I'm because <laughs> I'm just going right into the way I did yesterday. Um, so this is the biggest casting news. This is the biggest news we've gotten about Avatar Netflix, right? And my excitement for this. Um, for the show, it's been a roller coaster to say the least. It, it truly has. When it was first announced, like I like, it's one of those stupid, weird things that you know you remember exactly where you were. But those things are usually left for like big moments in your life, <laughs> stuff like that, or big events. I remember where I was at when Avatar Netflix was announced, and that Brian and Mike were coming back. I was in a meeting with like people who makes way more money than I made. Um, to say the least, way more important than I was. And I remember just getting all these vibrations on the phone and then checking it just slightly, like, holy crap, they're making Avatar again. Like, I would go to sleep at night thinking of how to do this, how to make a live-action version of it, how to make it right. And I was like, oh, they're finally doing it, bringing Mike and Brian back. And then we heard, like, no news for the longest of longest times, which is very uh, disparaging, disparaging, whatever that word is. And then we got hit with the, the biggest news, really, I still think, of the show, is that Mike and Brian left the oh, hands down. left the project. That is the biggest news, other than and, uh, when they first started on the project, <laughs> them yes. leaving the project is... Yeah, yeah, no yeah. Um, and since then, we've gotten some, some news here and there. It's, uh, it's been fairly inconsequential, except for recently we, we got news that Jeremy Zuckerman was not going to do the music on it, and that's a big blow as well. Um, so this, I think, is the first like actual positive news we've gotten. Uh, not to spoil how I feel about these this casting, but it's fairly positive. Uh, you know, right. since we've gotten since it was announced, <laughs> and which was like two years ago, I think, at least. <laughs> We could look back in our podcast history and find out, but that's that's work. I will say, yeah, I just i i don't I don't trust Netflix, and I don't uh, even mm. the weight of this good news just doesn't come close to like outweigh yeah, the bad. It, and I don't have any doesn't. reason to trust ne- Netflix, quite honestly. But I'm not going to let the impact as we're talking here today about how I feel about this this cast of whom I honestly don't know anything. So Chris is going to teach me a lot here. Uh, but that I just I have to kind of reiterate my overall opinion is like the the larger project I'm still like ugh, question marks all over but that doesn't have to impact how I feel about the cast. Yeah. Uh, so we got our casting official casting announcement. Oh, also shout out to Avatar News Twitter. Um, they were ahead of this a week ago before it was officially announced. And you know I've been the thing is I was it, at that point it was just a rumor. But I was like, you know what? This is probably 95, 99% true. I was going to make a video on it, but I'm just really busy all the time now. <laughs> and so I just don't have time and energy You've got to make three a, children a very... in the corner toilet. You've got a lot to take care <laughs> I know, of. know, right? Another house project. <laughs> you know, the actual job that I somewhat know what I'm doing. No, I'm kidding. I know what I'm doing. 50-50. Uh, <laughs> I get it. Um. And so I never got the energy to do it, but I'm really excited to talk about it today. Um, and so I was on video before when Avatar News found the news, and they have found it just by looking at who was following who on Instagram. <laughs> like 
Like, they started to realize someone sent them an anonymous tip of, like, hey, this person's following this person. Like, this actor is following this actor, and they're all following each other, and also following Albert Kim, who is the showrunner. Like, That's awesome. these are probably, these are probably the, the cast. That's and, uh, some and the excellent same thing, detective detection right there. Yeah, and the same thing happened on the show Shadow and Bone, which I still haven't finished yet. I'm, like, halfway through that. So I don't know, it's not that great. Um, which is also a Netflix uh kind of adaption and they also that show also uses elements in it to very little effect but i don't think avatar will have that same budget or have the same effects hopefully because i don't know it's kind of just bland anywho so this is the official cast announcement uh yeah, before thanks, that thanks for bringing this up as as news as an and as an episode opportunity always exciting to try to yeah, stay always exciting to like try to actually be current with something. Makes me feel important. But, yeah, so we're gonna go through. I want to go through um, each cast member, whether we like it or love the casting. Um, I will say right now, I don't hate any of this casting um, because it's. I don't have that much information on them, but so at a at a base level, I like it because they look like the characters look like they're um, they fit. Ethnic wise to to how the characters are. Um so yeah. And, and, and my I echo, also my my answers will echo Chris's probably exactly for yeah. lack of knowledge. I gotta work with what I got, you yeah. know? And so I'm just I'm just uh also later on I'm gonna go through Albert Kim's uh, statement regarding uh, regarding just the show and how they're approaching it. So let's get started with the first cast member, though. Excellent. Which, let's see who I pulled up first. I don't actually remember. Looks I knew like it would be Gordon. that one because, yes. Oh, Gordo. Or Gordo Boy. That's what we call him. We're on a first Best. name basis. Besties. Uh, so uh, Gordon Cor- Cormier, uh, I think he, I mean, you shave his head. I think he's, he's a great pick. He has some big ears. You know, uh, you know, Aang has some. <laughs> Beers. Didn't realize this was going to be a superficial <laughs> teardown of the poor oh, kid. Yeah. Well, no, not a teardown, but just, hey, Aang has some big old ears, you know? That's accurate. We're, yeah. Uh, they even say it in in, uh, in the Fortune Teller episode. <laughs> Remember, Aang is like, you have some big ears, and Aang is like, I do. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, that was funny. That's our second uh, reference of the fortune teller episode in this sit down. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. So, uh, Gordon, he is, oh man, I have his age here somewhere. Sorry guys. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, wait. My bad. My bad. One second. I believe he is 12 years old, which is, uh, the exact age that they're putting Ang at. So, you know, there was you know, rumors before about them maybe aging up the cast and everything, which I feel like they were still going to age up the cast. But then there was some negative feedback to it. And so they probably like, you know what, let's uh, let's just go back to to how the, we had, we were going to to the show. <laughs> how the show did it. Dang it. My kids move all my apps and stuff around because they <laughs> because they are children. Yeah. Yeah. It's because they're children. OK, so he is. 12 years old he is uh da, 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 da. dang it i'm Sorry, on he's... imdb and i haven't pulled up but i don't actually doesn't look like it's gonna show okay. names in there he doesn't have can... he doesn't have um much of a, a filmography uh okay so he's age 12 he's filipino he is canadian from vancouver um, best known for Netflix, Lost in Space, and Paramount Plus, The Stand. I've never seen any of that, but uh, he's probably fine those things. He does have some martial arts background, so that's great. Um, and there's videos you can find of him uh, doing a couple different martial arts things. Um, yeah, I was thinking he's, he does some skating things as well, although I don't think that's related to... Uh, <laughs> I don't think the thing you're pulling up now is related to him. I think it's just he's some random video. agile. Um... <laughs> I just, wanted, um, I just wanted to pull up the IFDB. Yeah. So to me, he, you know, looks like Aang. He, he could definitely pull off Aang. Um, he has, you know, a little charm about him, but, you know, I don't know much about him. 
you know what, what I know about them, I like it. So I'm gonna put this at just put it at a like. Seems reasonable enough to me. I I mean I have nothing on the kid. I've heard of Lost in Space, and that's literally as much as I can say. And even in that, yeah. I mean, was he in? Is was he just in an episode, or am I interpreting this wrong? I don't think he has a big role because I looked into Lost in Space, I think it was just and, one episode, yeah. and I did not find like a lot of. Uh, I didn't find his picture a lot on the like on the main cast mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Well, hey, strictly going on appearance and the fact you say he's got some martial artist background, but also the fact we yeah. got nothing else to nothing else to go off of. Yeah, why not? I'll give it a like it. Yeah, that seems right. reasonable. Next up. I'm not going to try to pronounce is, her name. I'm going to let you do it. Uh, I'm going to pronounce it Kaya Wintio. Sounds great. Sounds And if probably... she listens to this and gets upset, we're so sorry. We are deeply Just sorry. Just call us and talk with us a little bit. Yeah, come on the podcast. Yeah, why not? We'll love to have you. Uh, <laughs> she is age 14. Now, she does look a lot older than the character the person That's playing. That's not what I looked and, like when I was 14. <laughs> and a lot of the pictures that he... That he has up, that's kind of him younger. So they're probably much closer in age than than these pictures would suggest. Like a lot of time, I saw some some reaction being like, Psh, "Why is uh, Ang eleven and Katara like sixteen? Gross! Like they they must not be doing the Katang thing." And some people are like, "Oh, good, they're not doing the Katang thing now. They could do the the Zutara thing. Like, calm down. They're probably not." Y'all doing chill Zutara. out. That ain't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chill out. Uh, <laughs> anyway, she is fourteen years old. Uh, she's indigenous North American, specifically of the Mohawk tribe. She's from Canada. She's best known for uh, CBC, work on CBC and Netflix, Annie with an E. Uh, but what I, so I looked at her filmography and I found this movie called Beans. And I, I watched the trailer for it. She plays a big role in that movie. That's what the movie called, right? Beans? It should that, be. Right here, yeah. Yes. Beans. Take a look. Yep, right there. And. I think I can see Katara just in the performance that she gives um, and just in the trailer. Alone. I haven't watched the movie, but I see a lot of Katara. I see a lot of that fighting spirit that Katara has. Um, and I think she could definitely pull that off. This looks like one of those movies that are like, it's one of those like, I don't know, those indie the Tribeca Sundance Film, Film Festival, Festival Sundance yeah, stuff, type of, <laughs> yeah, type of movie. Um, and she looks like she gives a really but great performance in it. I mean, she's playing a leading role, and obviously that movie is exactly. made, what, a couple of years ago now? Two years ago? Uh, it came out in 2020. Okay, so she's filming yeah, so she it two years ago, yeah. Yeah, so she would have been probably 12. Yeah, she, and she's not been out a leading role. That's awesome. Great for her. Yeah. Um, also, she had, <laughs> I was doing some deep, deep dive in there. I found her YouTube channel. She's also like a, a musician, and she's done like little, like just singing videos. And I watched one, came across one, and like she starts it off like she's very casual and stuff. She starts off like, "Hey guys, hey here, Zuko here," and she's like, "You guys might get that joke." And so this was like years ago she did that video. So she's clearly a fan of the show, which I'm excited about. Um, and she has this nice little Qatar charm, I think, to her that you know it's a little little sweetness there, but she could definitely pull off. Those, uh, I think she could pull off those Katara, the edge that Katara has often. Despite so, me, I do think, I mean, I hope this didn't like, get me in trouble to say I'm not all about doing microaggressions on accident, but she looks much more Katara-like in this picture. Uh, yes. Whereas this picture, uh, because she's 14-year-old, yeah, <laughs> that just feel weird. Like when I was 14, I probably still had... You know those like really bright multicolored pants with like Kansas City Chiefs or whatever your football team was? Just like garish red and orange blended together and like a wind pants thing. And that's probably what I was wearing yeah. at 14. I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. so uh, in an interview in April 2021, which I'm getting this news off of outhernews.com, if anybody wants to know, um, we're getting some of this stuff from it. She, she said, it would be a dream if I could work on Avatar Last Airbender. I'm dying to be Katara. Uh, so great for her I think she's going to uh, really enjoy the role and uh, really embrace it and uh, yeah, happy for her happy that you know dreams do come true is um, avatarnews.co I think if you're looking for that yeah. I think it's avatarnews.co 
Oh, how am I still on this? That's weird. Okay. Uh, one second. Um, also, uh, so recently, you know, they came out with a couple statements. Let me read um, the statement from Aang's character, Aang's actor. Uh, why do I keep losing track of stuff? Because, you know, they had, they were able to now to say like, hey, we got the role, we got the part. <laughs> and uh, and just some of what, what statements they released. Uh, okay. Okay, so the actor playing Katara said, it's official. I'm excited to share that I've been cast as Katara in Netflix's live action of Batchin of Avatar Last Airbender. I know you all have been waiting. Thank you for all the love. So that's what she said. Uh, the Gordon it's weird to Cormier... hear somebody say that's what she said in a not perverted way. <laughs> no, right. It's like a literal <laughs> way. I like that. <laughs> uh, Gordon uh, said, wow, I am so honored to be cast to be casted as the legendary Aang in Netflix's live action adaption of Avatar Last Airbender. Yep, yep. That's uh, he said, meet my... <laughs> Be my new friends, uh, Kaya Wintio, Ian Owsley, and Dallas Liu is going to be a crazy ride. So, uh, again, I am, I'm, I'm very excited for this casting. I mean, I know you know they didn't go with my uh, pick. Oh man, I'm sorry, I forgot the girl's name that I originally cast in my video. I mean, did um, you send them the email, Chris? I don't know. Ah, you know, I forgot. I mean, now it's kind of on you, buddy. I'm sorry. That's yeah. rough, buddy. <laughs> um, then again, I made that casting video like two years ago, right when it was announced, and the cast that I picked are now far too old, I think, for a lot of these roles. Um, I picked like a 30-year-old person for Zuko because in my head, I was like, all right, well, if they cast it right now, like 30-year-old Zuko can easily, a 30-year-old actor can easily pull you off can like pull a that down, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, okay. So, I love this casting of uh, Kia Wintio as Katara. I think she'll do a really great job. Uh, I really appreciate that that she's cast uh, ethnically correct. Because oftentimes, I feel like sometimes Avatar fans forget that that uh, Eastern Asian influence is the only influence in Avatar. Like sometimes they're like, oh, hey, if they need to cast an all-Asian cast. I'm like, well... The characters aren't all Asian. Like, there's indigenous North Americans or Inuits uh, or Pacific Islanders that will they are like more so, like uh, the water tribes are, and also there's other cultures as well. And also, just you know, I think the only way that you can really go wrong is is it's all super white. Like, you just <laughs> <laughs> they could go super Blend it up white. a little bit. That's all I'm saying. You know? <laughs> Yeah, uh, cast Nicolo Peltz uh, back. I mean, she's doing like Transformer movies or whatever. Um, but and Jackson Rathbone is like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I, you know what? I can't wait for this show, just so the taste of the Last Airbender can be out my mouth to a certain extent. It'll be anyway. exciting to have something else, no matter good or bad. Maybe it'll at least uh, replace yeah. in conversations <laughs> the movie. Yes. Yes. That's our hope. I have no All reason right. to disagree with, with your love at casting. I, I can't think of any good reason to. So, yeah. I, I Ditto. Cool. All right. Next up, we got... See, I, I knew what order you are going in. Okay. So, uh, they cast Ian Owsley as Sokka. So, this is one that I really do not have that much information on. Um, he has been in... Let's see what his... Uh, background is so he is 14 years old he's indigenous north american although i also heard from outro news that he is also uh part asian he's best known for cbc and netflix oh i am sorry i am reading the wrong one he is 19 years old he looked like a very big 14 year old but i'm not here to argue you know <laughs> um actually wait yeah he is 19 <laughs> He would be a big 14 years old. He is 19 years old. Kids playing the wrong he sport. He is <laughs> indigenous North American of the Cherokee tribe. Although I did hear again from after news that he is also part Asian. I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, he's best known for probably just a role in Netflix's 13 Reasons Why. 
and probably just a fairly small role in Apple TV's physical. Um, so I don't have much info on him. And At least not he was this kinda like straight to Disney basketball movie <laughs> for 2021, The Big Shot. Mm. I'm sure mm. that's a gem. Uh, yeah, that, that's not a whole lot else to offer here. I see four four primary roles there. I have no experience with any of them. I guess there's two more. Oh, he was in Young Sheldon one time. That's kind of exciting. Mm. Yeah, so not an extensive list. Yeah. Uh, in the show, Sokka will be... Uh, so just a reference. Aang will be 12 in the show. Katara will be 14. Sokka will be 16. That I don't think that's any... I cannot remember how old Sokka is. I believe Sokka is 16 in the show. In the cartoon. I, I think he might be 15. You. I never remember that kind of detail. Uh, and Zuko apparently will be 17. That will be a difference. Uh, Zuko eventually turns. He starts off being 16 and he turns 17 by the end of the show. But here they just say he's 17. Probably not. I don't know. I'm worrying about it, I guess. I was going to say, is there a difference? Or are they just like, we're just going to round? The thing is, in the show itself, it's never like, hey, Izuko's now 17. Happy I don't know where I, <laughs> I, don't know where I got that information from. He goes into a tea shop in the Earth Kingdom and a bunch of people come out and sing <laughs> to him and stuff. Doesn't have yeah. to put up with that. Um, I did find a, a video, I believe it was Ian Owsley, and he does have some martial arts training. I thought to me that's kind of irrelevant with Sokka. I mean, it, it, will, it, will, <laughs> it will help with like, <laughs> it'll, I'm sure it will help thing. him. In, in his like fight choreography, even if because knowing you know martial arts, you, you know you, you or just knowing any type of thing they'll do. If he was like great at dance and had dance choreography, I'd be like, oh, well, that's be about the same amount of experience. <laughs> It'll help the same amount because you're just you're uh, you're used to doing routines. I, I, I you know knowing how things feel is is important if you have to do it at all. Like if you're making a movie about basketball. I would say that if you and I had to play roles, it'd be helpful that we've like touched and held and shot and dribbled the basketball and not just watched yeah. basketball, right? Like there's this feel. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like this casting. It's I have, I have nothing against it. It, it seems. I, I mean, of the three so far, it seems like there's kind of the least information to go on. Yeah. So yeah, sure, like it. He <laughs> he looks too serious in his picture. He should be like. So yeah. slapstick. But I, I will say this, this photo, you on know? on his Twitter, which he he does have a Twitter. Um, the Avatar Last podcasters uh, now follow him. Nice. Um, he seems he's he seems to be fairly uh, comedic, I guess, or goofy, or that, something. That's along plus those one lines. for me. Oh uh, yeah. So his his uh, his um really statement says, "I cannot believe it, but I have been cast as Sokka." Netflix live action adaption of After Last Airbender. So I'm going to be checked out for the rest of the day. Just chilling and sipping my cactus juice. It's the quinchiest. <laughs> <So. laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. I do think there's other pictures that shows him a little bit more comedic. That's a very serious picture right there. <laughs> this one here. Yeah. He looks like yeah. he's like Sokka as a model. That doesn't sound right. Yeah. I know. Right. Uh, anyway, okay. Next casting Last choice. Last but not least, Dallas uh, Lou. Uh, he he is uh, he probably has the most. I think um, he probably has the second most experience next to um, Kaya Wintio. Uh So he is 19 years old. He, I think he's you know he's kind of started to blow up. Um, he's Chinese in uh, Indonesian American. He's from L.A. He's best known for Hulu's Pin 15. And his biggest role, I think, which will be uh, really telling, is that he'll be in the next Marvel studio movie, uh, Shang-Chi. He will, so, uh, he will play a young Shang-Chi in, in, uh, in, uh, flash, in flashbacks. Interesting. Yeah. And so I think that is a good choice because i mean he's he's you no know, being a marvel movie doesn't hurt anybody i will say um, he has the most intriguing backstory or 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 work history um certainly the most interesting in my opinion let me pull it up here yeah and he definitely seems 
Oh, he he definitely seems like he uh oh, he can just pull off more of that that serious look. Like looking at if, if you watch the trailer for Shang Chi, you can see kind of a little bit of his work. Um, and so I think this is a uh, really good casting. I I think I and, you know, he he also has martial arts background as well. This is really amusing to me, you know, as a as a video games guy. That he was in the Tekken movie, which was just awful, by the way. Don't watch that. <laughs> Mortal Kombat Legacy. I don't recall. I'm sure it was terrible. Oh, no? Okay, well, it wasn't a real Mortal Kombat movie because it didn't get horrible reviews. <laughs> Mortal Kombat Legacy. I'm not familiar with that. Is that a short? Wait, he was in Mortal Kombat Legacy? Oh, that's interesting. Is that a short? Uh, no, it was a kind of a fan-made film. That, that, that was a highly production yeah, okay. fan-made film. That's why it that wasn't garbage. Up- <laughs> uh, and then also we've t- kind of talked about it before my wife's into crime scene television so like seeing CSI Cyber and Bones like my wife is rewatching Bones right now as we speak so I'm kind of excited if I I wish I could it doesn't look like it'll show me a picture of him in Bones I'm sure it's a very small role but that's exciting hmm. intriguing oh and uh, Kai Winto will also Oh, she just do some voice work and Marvel What If. I don't know what she's doing exactly. Interesting. But all these Marvel connections, that's gotta be a good sign. Yeah, whatever. Marvel. Whatever. Psh, whatever. <laughs> I meant to make a okay. joke in our last one in our in our last recording. Uh, because we were talking about spoilers and twists or fan theories or whatever, and at some point I was trying to slip in a joke about and at the end they found out his name was Gazan Palpatine. Or something like that. But I was like, wait, it's Nick, not Disney. It's going to ruin it. Uh, anyway. Because uh, Palpatine. I, that. I love this casting. I doubt it's Lou. I feel like he can definitely pull off that uh, angsty, angsty team. I, you know, I mean, the only comment I can kind of think of is that, you know, Zuko's kind of ripped, right? And he's just wearing these clothes. Like, I, sound, I hate to sound weird, but you want to see him in the tank top or whatever. See if he looks like he's ripped, you know? No, he he is the certainly the easiest for me to identify with of the four we talked about today. Looks like it. Would be I do great. really hope. Say love. I, I I really hope that they give him the bald ponytail look. I do too. It's, I do too. It's iconic. Well, and Sokka too. I hope he gets the right. I hope he has to. Oh, to I me mean, that's easy. So, to I mean, essentially all that's four just, of them. Let's but... just cut. Let's just cut your hair on the sides and. But and you put still got to pull the ponytail. Tail. Yeah. But to me, the <laughs> to me that's a commitment doing. Uh, a diamond and ponytail, <laughs> like that, that. That takes like, all right, I'm gonna have no more acting jobs while I'm shooting season one of this. It's just a glued-on hair prosthetic, just right there. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think this casting is great. I mean, this is. It's been the only thing that got me even a little bit more excited. For <laughs> for this for this show, we we are Since, selling uh, one thing, just maybe the teeniest bit short, and I don't want to overdo it because again, it's not going to affect my feelings on the whole series. But I will say, when they announced the new show director, whose name I can't remember, but you will tell me is Albert Kim. That one, that we were kind of like, okay, he seems like a capable replacement. Yeah. Like as far as replacing your two favorite show direct show <laughs> uh goes. No. Um, I feel like there was some little element of positivity to that. So I'll just I'll plug Albert Kim real short. Yes, quick. actually, I'm about to bring him up. So he released a statement, fairly long statement. Uh, I will try to read. Oh, I'm sorry. I also meant to read the character descriptions because that's actually pretty big. So I want to read Aang's character description. It is uh, Aang, 12. A fearless and fun-loving 12-year-old who just happens to be the Avatar master of all four elements and the keeper of balance and peace in the world. An air-bending prodigy, Aang is a reluctant hero, struggling to deal with the burden of his duties while still holding on to his adventurous and playful nature. That sounds like no change at all. Uh, Katara, 14. A determined and hopeful waterbender the last in her village. Through the only 14, she's already endured great personal tragedy which has her, which I'm sorry, which has held her back from rising to her true potential, though it's never dimmed her warm, warm and caring spirit. That part is interesting because I feel like Katara's mother, Katara losing her mother 
and the show never kind of kept her from her true potential. But I think that could be an interesting character development that she's not that she hasn't been able to process that loss or get through that grief, and that's part of her arc. I mean, that, that's that's sort of part of the show, but that brings it to the forefront and it makes it part of that arc. When it came to the show, that affected her arc in a way that she she it took her a while to trust the Fire Nation, specifically trust Zuko, because when she saw the Fire Nation, when she saw Zuko, all she saw was her mother's killer. But in this case, it makes it seem like just that loss itself is affecting her. So, you know, I, I like that change. I'm, I'm good with it. I, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like a whole lot to me. I want to see how it plays out. But as, a, as far as the description goes, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sokka, 16. Katara's sardonic and resourceful 16-year-old brother. Outwardly confident, even brash, he takes his responsibility as the leader of the tribe seriously, despite his inner doubts over his warrior skills. Doubts that he masks with his wit and deadpan sense of humor. That sounds exactly like Sokka. I'm com- completely cool with that description. Zuko, 17, a skilled firebender and intense and guarded crown prince of the Fire Nation, currently roaming the world in exile. He's on an obsessive quest to capture the Avatar because he believes that is the only way to reclaim his life and live up to the demands of his cruel and controlling father, the Fire Lord. So the only, that sounds like Zuko, but there's only like one thing that might be like a little different that they might be changing is that he believes that this is the only way to reclaim his life. Like, I mean, to me, it's not a belief thing. Like he, he knows like if I capture the Avatar, like I can... Like my father says, I can I can come back. Like I wonder, does he think of the Avatar as? I wonder. I, don't, I wonder if the Fire Lord ever tasked him with that, or if he's like, I know I can get back in my in my father's good graces if I capture the Avatar, even though no one thinks he is this. I'd rather have it be. And I'm I'm making I'm taking one little sentence and, <laughs> and uh, taking a lot from it. If that's the case, I'd rather have it be that the Fire Lord owes I sent him on this quest to find the avatar, knowing that it was a fool's errand, knowing that it was a, a pipe dream that he's a chasing a unicorn. Snack chase, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that makes it even more cruel. And even uh, more redeeming when it turns out to be a real thing. Yeah. So those are those character descriptions. Intriguing. Uh, yeah. All right. So real quick statement from Albert Kim. Uh, so his statement is, this is all my daughter's fault. She's the one who got me hooked. Uh, when the Avatar Last Airbender first aired Nickelodeon, she, was, she wasn't quite old enough to fully track the narrative. Yeah, I still find her glued to the TV every week. And he, he goes on to say that after a while, he was also glued on watching the TV. Granted, for me, you know, I heard that before. M. Night said the same crap. Like, whatever. You're not, you're not buying me what the daughter was into it. Shtick. I'm like, <laughs> sorry. I mean, I... And I will say with all sincerity, we just we don't have a ton of reason to trust Netflix. Yeah. Not that it, that means it's explicitly going to be terrible or anything, but it's not like we have a whole lot of reason to trust Netflix. Yeah. He, he goes also also say that he really enjoyed that uh, that the show drew from Asian cultures and legend, uh, which is a rarity. Um, and you know he's he's Asian himself, uh, and he was glad that his daughter got to see characters who looked like her on screen. It was more than just entertaining; it was a gift. He says, flash forward 15 years, Netflix offers me the opportunity to develop a live action remake of Avatar. Like, why, why did they choose him? Um, I don't, <laughs> like, that's my question. Like, after Mike and Brian left, they're like, hey, let's choose this guy. Hey, you know that to show me, Nikita? It... That's pretty similar. Yeah, to me, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but he, he goes, my first thought was, why? What is there I could do or say with a story that wasn't done or said in the original? Ala had only grown in popularity and acclaim over the last decade and a half, which is a testament to how complete and resonant the narrative experience had been. So if it ain't broke, why fits it? But the more I thought about it, the more intrigued I became. Uh, VFX technology has advanced to the point where a live action version can not only faithfully translate what had been done in animation and bring a rich new visual dimension to a fantastic world, we'll be able to see bending in a real, in a real and visceral way we've never seen before. Also, Netflix format meant we had an opportunity to reimagine a story that had originally been told in self-contained half-hour episodes as an ongoing serialized narrative. 
that meant story points and emotional arcs we loved in the original could be given more room to breathe and grow. All right, I have one issue with that. Avatar, it's not like... <laughs> There's few... To me, there there is one narrative. Like, there's a couple episodes that that are fairly self-contained, but to me, I disagree. I think the whole thing is really one narrative. Uh, so I disagree with him there, Albert Kim. I would say that's one of the things that we historically, <laughs> as as mentioned repeatedly in our episodes, like best about it is that it's a large, massive self-contained narrative well not self-contained it mandates all three seasons to really get the yeah. whole story and appreciate it which and i wonder does a great job of wrapping it up at the end and it doesn't leave loose ends for four seasons or whatever necessarily uh that's why we love it <laughs> yeah uh which i wonder if if there will be less like like yeah every every episode is fairly self-contained so to, to a certain extent but there's the arcs are moving over all the episodes like, sure, you wrap up stuff in Omashu, but the, the story, the whole story is still going, and part, and that was part of the whole story. Everyone was, was moving in, in one direction. As a um, three-season not... serial TV show, its three-season story arc is, is infinitely better, you know, what am I looking for? Like, better designed than basically anything else that you'll find in terms of being one single massive story arc designed for three seasons. Yeah. Books. Yeah, I, I'm not. Books. I'm not uh, agreeing with his uh, take whether he can make an ongoing serialized narrative. It was it was already ongoing serialized. Oh, and again, makes me think that we're going to have less of. And like maybe we'll have less of the tro- world traveling or less contained episodes. I don't know. Maybe that statement episodes even. Yeah, I don't know, that statement. Uh, just leaves just boggles the mind. I guess. Then he says, finally, a live action version would establish a new benchmark and representation and bring in a whole new generation of fans. This was a chance to showcase Asian and indigenous characters as living and breathing people, not just in the cartoon, but in a world that truly exists very similar to the one we live in. I'm perfectly fine with that. Although, I don't know, I feel like I'm projecting <laughs> some negativity onto him sometimes. I'm like, you're not Mike and Brian guy. Um, <laughs> Which? But I should. I, I'm I'm being biased. You know, Are you being, being biased, it, or if a person just, creates an original work, if a person <laughs> creates an original work of art, you know, a painting. Let's say that somebody Picasso does a painting, and then if you go try to recreate that painting for money, <laughs> I feel like I'm just, allowed to be like, yeah, I'm gonna project some of this expectation onto you right now. Just that one statement of not just in the cartoon. When I, when I hear like not just cartoon, it it just sounds. And it's probably not negative. You probably something negative about it. I am making a mountain animal hill again. I am. Mm, I feel like I'm being beyond to something I disagree. Right. But I, I see the vast importance of having live action action, of having that Asian representation. That is huge. Uh, just, it's just the, it's just the, just the cartoon statement that I don't know. Anyway, he goes on to say. <laughs> I also knew what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to change things for the sake of change. I didn't want to modernize the story or twist it to fit current trends. Aang is not going to be a greedy anti-hero. Katara is not going to get curtain bangs, whatever that is. I have no idea what he's talking about. I guess it's changing her hair for the sake of changing her hair. Um, (laughs) I was briefly tempted to give Sokka a TikTok account, though. Think of the possibilities. I'm pretty sure he's joking there, uh, but it's not funny. Anyway, that was oh. a funny pun that you just made. Is that I'm thinking about giving Sokka a TikTok. I'm pretty sure he's joking there. Like that in itself was kind of a play on words. Uh, but in the end, the reason I decided to do this came down to one thing. Somewhere out there, a young kid is sitting glued to their TV, waiting to be taken on an incredible journey, and I want to take them on it. Hope you'll come along too. Uh, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of just corpse yeah, beat that I don't. It's not that exactly. I don't care for it or whatever. I just ignore yeah. it ninety nine percent of the time. The thing is, is that I'm just in my head. I'm just like, what? What made Mike and Brian leave? Right? He's like, I'm not changing for the sake of change. Okay. What, then why they go? What? Why? Why did Mike and Brian leave Netflix? I, I want to. I would. I would love to interview someone. I would never get the opportunity. Just like, hey, so what are you gonna do that Mike and Brian weren't gonna do? 
Or what was my brain going to do that you're not going to do? And then no one's ever going to ask me that question because that's a very, like... They wouldn't even <laughs> give you, like, a the correct... They'd give you, like, the nice answer, not the real one. Yeah. And also, you would not, as an interviewer, you would not be invited to any more interviews ever. of Netflix shows. Mm. <laughs> so they got to they gotta play the game. But... Chris, uh, just curious, what, uh, in, in all time... And don't don't look at your ratings. I just want to like top of your head. What's your favorite live action uh, adaptation of a previously animated movie or TV? What's your what's your favorite success story? Uh, I mean, um, I don't know. They don't make live action adaptation. Uh, probably Aladdin, okay. which is actually a great segue uh, because the one of the producers on this show. His name is Dan Lin. He also produced Aladdin. And he produced a couple other things that I like also. Um, so that's good. Hmm. Intriguing. Okay. Well, I'm just curious. The things that other people don't like, I'm like a lot. To me, I think the live action version is a lot better. Maybe not a lot better, but it, to me, it's clearly better. And I feel like people either say like, oh, well, Robin Williams carries it, which I'm like, all right, I get that. If you, you know, because Robin Williams is, but also Robin Williams is a little dated in in that, <laughs> that a lot of his references and jokes don't hold up. They're dated. And also they as are, a kid, they're very timely why would I... to the time or very specific yeah. to the time. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he's still a great genie. I'm not going to say yeah. that Will Smith was a better genie. I just think other elements of the movie is much better than elements of the of the cartoon like jasmine ashton has a character arc like she's she's not just some prize to be won by either aladdin or but jafar Chris, or she whoever. literally says she's not some prize to be won like in the animated like that's not her exact quote but she like actually says that i disagree entirely that the she, she I, says I hate that, i hate but Aladdin's, the story still i hate makes the interpretation it of aladdin i hate the interpretation of aladdin in the live action movie and his character and his weird engineering thing that he does with his little hideout, and I think that's garbage. Um, What's wrong with his hideout? But he has he has like what, is he a master engineer that he makes this magic hideout where he gets the pulls the lever and all the stuff what, go up? I think that's, that's not garbage. that hard. That, no, that no, that's very hard for was him, around like, for him and to like do. Stone Age. No, but he would not be able to do it in the middle of town. I don't like that he didn't have to like sneak through some very like more janky way, like a very challenging way to get up to his hideout. I don't like his interpretation as a character. I like Will Smith as a genie. I'm actually going to take that or leave that. I like them both, so I'm not going to say that. No. And I, I did not like Aladdin at all, and I will deny until I die that any live-action movie is better than the animated original when it comes to those Disney movies. I hate them all. Lion King, I hate the worst. <laughs> I despise them. I, I hate animatronic. I can't. Not animatronic. I can't, What's I the word? Can't, live I can't animals, defend Lion King. Live animals, but like moving the mouths and talking and stuff. I hate that. In every oh, no, that, instance. That, well, that wasn't what they did. <laughs> That's what they did in, like, that. There was a Jungle Book movie. Jungle Book. Um, what are they doing? Well, it doesn't matter. I don't want live animals. No, no, I'm sorry. Not, not that. They're different Jungle Book movies. Anyway. Uh, I don't want to. I don't like them. Great. I, I, don't, think, I, think, I think if you take a kid don't today. Don't tell my wife this, which, but not even Homeward Bound. I hate it all. I don't want talking animals. <laughs> I think I if you take a kid animals. today, have them sit down and watch a Latin cartoon and a Latin movie, they would be like, Kind of bored by the cartoon. Maybe not bored. I disagree. I think they would. Pick well, I have proof. I have yeah, proof, but you, your kids are all biased, so you can't do that. They're not biased. I just no. They're I said, biased. How are they? I, I don't tell them kids. anything. <laughs> they're your kids. You have a. You've created your own. My daughter life. went away. From and they're all crafted. Aladdin, they're all sharing the live action. Just they're all sharing it. in a in a like a similar demographic and psychographic of life experiences as you have you to get a true sample size. You'd have to have a smattering of different backgrounds. I'm just saying, I have, I'm just saying I have proof. You don't, uh, you don't have proof though. You don't have a sample size. You're an analyst. You know better than I'm, that. Stop it. I know. I, I know. I didn't say that. Statistically speaking. No, you said I have kids proof. Like it more, you literally said, I have but proof. it's still proof. It's still proof though. Sean, uh, it's evidence at best. But you have nothing. Is the point? I can get something. some. Some is children. better. All right, go kidnap some children. I'll go kidnap. Some... <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to kidnap them forever. Like I'll even tell you, like just like what four hours total one movie. Hey kids, movie, one... wanna come to my house? Watch some Disney movies. Even the order get that the you fan. show them, like you have to have 
the order that you show them in can impact it. So like you need a large enough sample size that you can make one group watch it a certain order. Oh, and she's the other group I've... watch it the flip flop order. But for their first view, this gotta be like a first viewing she's experience. Watched... She watched the cartoon first and didn't really finish it. I, I'm just saying it says, like, it's got to have a sample size. She wasn't that into it. I hate like, every one n- of those Nostalgia is blinding a lot of people from enjoying things. I As soon as I saw the way that he got up to his hideout, I was already, like, I went into You're it You're focusing cynical. on the wrong things, Sean. I, I went into it cynical. <laughs> and, but are you, are you having that same criteria, that same critique for the cartoon of, like, Oh, how is Aladdin jumping through all these hoops and stuff? No, no that's what I want how my Aladdin he... to be. No, that's what I want my Aladdin to be is this very sort of uh, athletic, uh, sort of acrobatic figure. Like that's that's what I want Aladdin to be, and that's how I enjoy the Aladdin. That's how he's gotten around and escaped. Not like, not like this machination that he built into a, like a building alley. You know. Yeah. Yes. One levy and you're like this is ridiculous but it's very important in telling to his character and the type of character that he is that's a microcosm of the larger <laughs> character he is in that show versus what i want my aladdin to be uh i hate him all. if i had to pick one i'd pick beauty and the beast uh, i don't even have a good reason other than i like seeing uh something like the beast visualized i guess but i don't have a good reason for that but um, this is all my big segue into just i haven't i have yet to like a live action adaptation of anything at all I have yet to enjoy one. I didn't. I don't know what other. I didn't go I mean, into. To me, there's not. To me, there's not a lot. Uh, well, actually, there is a lot. Uh, it? It's just hard to tell because really, I didn't you have... like it all. Uh, I didn't watch Bleach. I mean, you still have to count the Avatar movie to some extent. That is a live ad- action adaptation. No, you gotta count it. Yeah, you gotta count it. Uh, obviously, I don't care for the Disney ones. What's the TV shows? My missing some TV shows. Uh, that's some failed anime, Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but like oof. the thing is, so many, so many of these things weren't true to the source material. Have we ever talked about Dragon Ball Evolution versus uh, probably versus uh, Avatar? The Last Airbender. Because I would probably rather watch The Last Airbender than watch Dragon Ball Evolution again. Definitely, without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and not and not just because I'm an Avatar fan, but because there's still some story elements. There's still some fairly good visuals. In the last Airbender, um, Dragon Ball Evolution. I don't know what they were trying it to do. It was maybe the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Maybe. Yeah, and that that boy Hollywood was just this high. Praise. They were just so high in. Praise. You would have thought they would have stopped whitewashing characters after a while, but they just kept it going <laughs> until like they were just gonna last keep two years. That one. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Um. <laughs> You know, it's funny as I'm looking here and I'm just doing some quick Googles, uh, but it's funny that it kind of works both ways of like, you also have all these like live action films that then spawned like horrible cartoons. So it's kind of working both ways here, unfortunately. Hmm, like it'd be true. like a live action adult movie, like an Ace Ventura that then spawned a terrible TV like, show. Like uh, Mighty Ducks. Exactly. All oh, of yes. that type yeah. of, so it goes both ways. Uh, I don't know if that's in my defense or just to be fair is that they both kind of don't historically pan out very well. Hey, the Mortal Kombat, the cartoon, though, that you told me to watch? Yeah. I, I don't know if it counts because... Oh, no, that game. movie? Uh, uh, Scorpion's Revenge? Movie? That was great. I loved it. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know where that fits into this conversation, but that was great. They're coming out with a sequel soon. Uh, should be right out probably in like within three months. Good. I think. That's awesome. Uh, Maleficent. I'm just naming off other ones that on a quick article mm-hmm. I looked at here. I don't know. I mean, it was fine. I didn't like it. I'm no, then again, I don't. Genre. Things I don't like those original movies. <laughs> like, yeah, to me, those fair. aren't good either. Mulan. Like, Beauty I, didn't the Beast, like, I didn't like the live uh, action Mulan at all. It might be my least favorite next to Lion King. It was not fond. Uh, I think if, that one's man. hard because Mulan <laughs> is one of my favorite animated movies. So that one's hardest yeah. to. To separate like Mulan and Hercules I, are two of my favorites. Obviously. I liked I liked some of the stuff they were doing in Mulan. For some reason, it didn't it didn't hit. But I think I think I am very. I don't think I can be that objective in, in, in Mulan. I'm just like there was no songs. It was the hardest no to be objective in Mulan, it and was, also it, it was it was the most different. Lion King is the easiest because I don't really like the original Lion King as a movie. So that one I felt like I was going to be the most objective, but then I hate just the talking animals in live action movies 
all the mm-hmm. time always so then i wasn't objective there either yeah i can't i can't defend the only thing i can defend the lion king is uh oh, i can't think of his name who played simone he was great i think i thought he was funny and, I, and also i liked um seth rogan as as pumba uh, those yeah, two i think were the, were the brightest points in the movie i think the movie was actually funnier than the original lion king but everything else was worse jungle book i didn't I thought Jungle Book was great the first time I watched it, and then for some reason it doesn't hold. That I much. like the old Jungle Book with like John Cleese in it better than the current Jungle Book, like live action. I'm not a fan of really any Jungle Book. <laughs> it lists. Uh, I didn't think about this, but it lists like the Scooby Doo movies. <laughs> I didn't think about that. It's a. It's a. It's oh, a you know what? Scoo- scattered actually, history. Scattered history. The Scooby Doo live action was done well. The first one was done very well. Yeah. Uh and it's one of my like weird personal favorite movies. I could probably yeah, That's uh, a great talk cast it right now. Oh, okay, here's a good one. Uh The Grinch is technically an animated to a live action. Yeah. That's a good I well, I don't know about great. Depends on if you like Christmas movies or not, but it's well done. Okay. Yeah, no, it's a it's a sketch history. Long story short. Oh, definitely. Okay. Now, oh, sorry for the tangent, but, but just wait. You know, but just so like, once they get it right, once they get adapting like anime-ish shows right, there's going to be a flood of them, and and they're successful. And there's going to be like they've been uh, fishing for a while, and they just need one to catch, and they'll be like, "All right, yeah. we got to do it." All right, fine. Finally, we got we got the we we found the recipe. This is how you do it. Hopefully, Avatar can do it. <laughs> Fingers also, crossed. Netflix is also making a Yu Yu Hakusho movie or TV show, uh, which has been filming already. So I hope that's good because I love Yu Yu Hakusho. I've been rewatching it. I think it's the best anime of all time. Um, I haven't touched and it I'm, yet. And I'm pretty biased list. in that. To uh, me, that would make a really good movie series, I think. To me, it's like having dead. Not, it's, dead point in the sense that there's a lot of curse. That's not like a lot of cursing. I let my daughter watch. It's not a lot of cursing, but they say enough words. They just like this kid doesn't seem all that like friendly. He's not your typical hero. Uh, like he's not like oh I'm trying to I'm not trying to kill people and stuff like that. Like if there's a bad guy, which I mean they're demons. He's like I'm trying to kill you. Like he's not like oh let me save him. Let me let me talk them and turn them into my friend and stuff like that. You know like. No, I'm, I'm going to beat you up, and either you're going to conform, or or I'm going to kill you. Like, I mean, he, he makes friends along the way, but he's never just like, hey, we can work this out, because I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> it's like a what, my way or the highway, and you get that choice right when you beat him, yeah. and, uh, and, and that's it. You better know your yeah. answer. So hopefully Netflix does that right, because I really love that. Uh, yeah, that one's on my on my to watch list. Uh, we're getting into football season though, which means that I probably mm-hmm. won't watch TV anymore forever. But other other than Avatar, of course. And hey, that's kind of a fun segue into an episode we're going to put out a few weeks from now, which is a TV show that I did just watch, and I look forward to talking to you guys about that one. Um, Chris, final thoughts: live action casting. Anything you need it's to get a, off your chest? It's a good cast. I can't wait to see them. Um... Can't wait to see first picks. Uh, you know, shooting's supposed to start in November, so we'll probably get to see some first picks in November, December. So that'll be exciting just to get a sense of how the costumes are going to be and everything. Uh, hopefully they do Zuko Scar right this time. And, uh, yeah, and, oh, we'll get more casting news too. So, we'll, you know, we'll have more, more videos to do. If I had to guess, I'll probably cast... Um, Iro Nets. I'm still hoping. So now, so my casting video before, right? All the main cast for Team Avatars were too old at this point. But all my choices for the older ones are still old. Older characters are still <laughs> same old, same older character. So once you pass X age, yeah. you just old forever. You can play whatever uh, old person would, you want. I would love uh, Jackie Chan for Iro. I know it will be hard not to see Jackie Chan, but he has such great acting chops. And if you can get him to direct an episode with his fight choreography, it would be so good. Specifically, I would love him for him to, to direct the Blue Spirit episode because one thing he won't be acting in that one 
really all that much because that will give him some time to do the directing aspect of it. And that episode is like, there's so much, I feel like Jackie Chan isms, right? It's like, oh, you grab this object and now it's a tool, now it's a ladder and you're going from here to there. You grab a broomstick and now it's a propeller and, and whatnot. Um, or get the guy from Doctor Strange. I hear a lot of people say him. Um, but uh, yeah, so looking 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 forward to just hearing what more casting choices are. But my assignment will uh, uh, it will never. This will always just kind of feel like a. It won't feel canon, I guess. I'm looking forward to just a a steadier stream of of news hmm. and or updates. <laughs> Feels like we've yeah. been you know talking about this show for years, and now we just finally have casts and some shooting dates. So I'm just looking forward to a steadier stream of news, even if my larger opinion, like I mentioned earlier, doesn't doesn't really remain. And I believe that we're kind of entitled to some skepticism at first, at least. Um, yes. So, but yeah, looking forward to things happening more frequently. Oh, it was a long episode. Okay. Well, I feel like we, I was really wrapping up at 30 minutes. We, <laughs> we went another 20. We had to, uh, I know, but we had to talk about live action stuff because it's such a because you're so pessimistic, you're... Sean. You've been I... so pessimistic lately. I... I'm so <laughs> Listen, I'm having a tough place in life because I have a good job and a nice family, and it's uh, it's really difficult <laughs> to to be that way. No, I just uh, this I've obviously been pessimistic about since the start. Even even you, with you, Mike you have been. I I was very excited, and you had some 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 pessimism towards you, which. Does that really so? It's all based on the distaste for live action to this point. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, long story short, is my brain and my imagination kind of works in animated. When I imagine things or when I use my imagination, it's more of an animated feeling than a real life feeling. And so uh, for all these fantastic things and elements, uh, I think they just where I relate to them better. But I don't know. we'll see. It's like one of those things where I'm happy to give my opinion and obviously I'm going to watch it anyway could very well partially enjoy it or fully enjoy it regardless so yeah whatever awareness is the first step right don't be don't be blinded don't be blinded by your pessimism or by your bias just acknowledge um yeah that's all i got let's let's wrap things up and excited to do one more recording on this long evening but in the meantime <laughs> my name is sean shaler that's my friend chris ford aka the objective geek I'll put lots of contact information down in the Oh, and uh, and I will put uh, in the description some videos and stuff for you all to watch, uh, reference videos of, of these actors that I found to be uh, pretty telling of what they could possibly deliver in, in the show. Mostly I just got uh, Daniel Liu and uh, Kaya Wintio. I'm going to go Don't creep on their on Twitters me. as soon as we're done. <laughs> yeah, uh, I only know that people Ian Owsley has one. I will find them. But he only has like <laughs> 1,500 Twitter followers. That's, that's pretty lame. He's probably not doing cool martial arts stuff yeah. on there. Or I know, right? I, hey, thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we've got a special guest. And in a couple weeks from now, we're going to do another kind of one-off episode. So we hope you'll join us for those. Thank you so much for watching Avatar The Last Podcasters. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>